Homo sapiens, who are we? Where did we come from? What is the nature of life itself? Questions a reflective mind might ask. But are these questions which we can really answer? Do we have enough of the pieces of this grand puzzle to even begin putting it together? Let's take a look. The first and most important puzzle piece was set in place in 1859 with the publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species, the seminal work in evolutionary biology. Darwin's opus laid out the framework for biological evolution with the concept that all life changes over time as a result of natural environmental pressures. This concept is fundamental to any attempt to answer the question, who are we? Other pieces of the puzzle have been provided by important field work in the discipline of paleoanthropology, the study of ancient humans and their ancestral relatives in the fossil record. From the discovery of the bones of a Neanderthal in 1856 in Germany, to Raymond Dart's discovery of the Tong child, a juvenile Australopithecine in 1924 in South Africa, to many other discoveries in Africa and around the world, the nature of human evolution is starting to come to light. The advent of modern genetics, especially evolutionary genetics, has led to not only great advances in our basic understanding of the fundamental mechanisms of evolution, but to insights into a basic timeline of human evolution, one of the most fundamental steps in answering the questions of who we are and where we came from. Now we have the tools to begin our attempt to answer our initial questions. Who are we and where did we come from? These tools being, one, the concept of evolution, that life changes over time, two, the results from field work and excavations in paleoanthropology, three, the results from field work and studies in evolutionary genetics, and we will add one more, anthropological field work related to the living examples of humankind that may shed light on our immediate human ancestors, and it is with this tool we will begin our quest to answer our questions on the nature of humankind. Any great quest needs its set of clues. As our quest begins, anthropology provides us with our first clue, the San Bushman of the Kalahari Desert of Southern Africa. But why the San Bushman? The first Homo sapiens lived in hunter-gatherer societies. The San Bushmen represent one of the best living examples of a hunter-gatherer society. Anthropological studies among the San Bushmen have led to great insights into what our hunter-gatherer past may have been like. The San people are magnificently adapted to living in an unforgiving environment. Over thousands of years as a hunter-gatherer society, they have gained an intimate knowledge of the plants and animals on which they depend for survival. The San people are intrinsically bound to the land in which they live. When we study the San Bushmen, we study what it was to be human many thousands of years in the past prior to the advent of agriculture. The San people are not only ancient in lifestyle, but also genetically. Detailed analysis of San DNA sequences has found that the San Bushmen are the most genetically diverse of any living human population. This genetic diversity is an indicator that they are the closest living representative to our Homo sapiens ancestral root. Another indicator of the ancient lineage of the San Bushmen is their language. The click language of the Bushmen is thought to reflect characteristics of the first human languages. A past study by scientists at Stanford University theorized that the cliques found in some 30 African languages may harken back 40,000 years or more into the past. Thus, the language of the San Bushmen may represent one of the oldest languages still in use anywhere in the world. <laughs> So we have our first clue, the San Bushman, living in Africa, living in a hunter-gatherer society, and genetically speaking, the most ancient lineage of living human populations, speaking a click language that harkens back to the earliest human languages. An important first clue one that emphasizes the important role Africa will play in our quest to find out who we are. Now we will take a look at the next clue in our quest. For this clue, we will turn to paleoanthropology. 
Here we will dig ever deeper into the past as we continue our quest to find out who we are. In our quest to discover the nature of who we are, we will look for our second clue in paleoanthropology, the study of our ancient human ancestors in the fossil record. Hassan Bushman, our first clue, with the help of anthropology and genetics, has let us look some thousands of years back into our past. With the help of paleoanthropology, we will attempt to look millions of years into our ancient past. But looking millions of years into the past is not easy. If you've ever tried to investigate your own family's history, you know that going past your great-grandfather can be difficult, and that is only three or four generations. With paleoanthropology, we will be attempting to look anywhere from 20,000 to 160,000 generations back, and to really push it, possibly 280,000 generations into our past, quite a stretch up the family tree. So to simplify the process of covering so much time and data, let's first acquaint ourselves with our relatives on our family tree. Homo sapiens extend from the present back to around 200,000 years in the past. There's a bit more to it than that, but we will cover that issue when we arrive at a future clue in our quest. Next on our family tree, we will place our cousin, Homo neanderthalensis. Recent genetic evidence indicates some interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, but appears to have had little impact on the general genetic makeup of Homo sapiens. Homo neanderthalensis lived from approximately 30,000 years to 300,000 years into the past. Next, we will list Homo heidelbergensis, an extinct member of the genus Homo, which is thought to have lived from about 300,000 to 800,000 years in the past. Homo heidelbergensis is thought to have been the progenitor to Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens. Farther up the family tree, we find Homo erectus. Homo erectus, also known as Homo ergaster in Africa, is thought to have lived over a range of time extending 70,000 years in the past to 1.9 million years in the past. Homo erectus is the first member of the genus Homo to migrate out of Africa. Fossil evidence of Homo erectus has been found in Africa and as far east as China. Next we have Homo habilis. Homo habilis lived from about 1.4 million years in the past to 2.5 million years in the past. Homo habilis is considered to be one of the earliest members of the genus Homo and also thought to be one of the first stone tool makers. Moving ever farther into the past and up the family tree, we come to Australopithecus africanus. Australopithecus africanus lived between 2 and 3 million years into the past. Next we have Australopithecus afarensis. Australopithecus afarensis lived from about 2.9 million years ago to 3.8 million years ago. The best known example of afarensis is the famous 3.2 million year old fossil known as Lucy discovered at Hadar, Ethiopia in 1974. Moving ever farther back into the dim past, we arrive at Auroran Tungenensis, who lived between 5.6 and 6.2 million years into the past. Fossils of Auroran were discovered in the Tungan Hills of Kenya. Auroran may represent one of the earliest bipedal hominins. Next we have Sahelanthropus chadensis. Sahelanthropus chadensis is thought to have lived between 6 million and 7 million years in the past. Sahelanthropus represents one of the oldest members on the family tree Homo. There is some evidence based on the foramen magnum, the opening at the base of the skull where the spinal cord connects, that suggests Sahelanthropus may have walked upright. But due to the limited nature of fossil evidence surrounding Sahelanthropus, little is known about its true nature. With Sahelanthropus, we have come as far back into our past as paleoanthropology can take us. Genetic evidence based on DNA sequencing and molecular clocks puts the human-chimpanzee genome split at between 6 and 7 million years into the past. To go any deeper, we would have to enter into an area so speculative as to be of little use. So we will end our look at our family tree here and move on to a closer inspection of the fossil evidence.